So it's about that time that I share another little story. I know y'all like being in my business. I know y'all like to hear the tea, honey, okay? And so this is what I would call your non-typical soulmate story, okay? Because everybody likes to think of soulmates in a specific type of way. They like to glamorize it. They like to think just because a person is a soulmate that they should get a free pass, okay? We like to use labels as twin flame to let somebody treat you like trash. And, oh, well, it's a soulmate, so I'm supposed to forgive him. I'm supposed to do this. I'm supposed to lower my boundaries. I'm supposed to be treated like crud. And the answer is no, honey. Okay. So I'm going to give you an example of what happened between me and spirit when it came to the soulmate that I met a couple years back. Okay. So there was this guy that I was talking to and dealing with, all right? And I think we only had like two or three dates. It wasn't that much because as I'm talking to him daily, he was the type that loved to dry beg, okay? He was always having a bad day. He was always hungry, thirsty, didn't have any money, okay? And it's one thing to be in that state, but it's another thing to be in that state when you're constantly trying to rely on somebody else. You know, it's when somebody just really wants pity. You get what I'm saying? And then it's like he was non-committal. He wanted to just be out there doing what he wanted to do. Honestly, there was more no's than yeses. There were more red flags than green flags. You get what I'm saying? But of course, I'm always nosy. So I'm going to go ahead and check. I'm going to pull the cards out, honey. I'm going to ask questions. I'm like, who is this person and why is this person in my life? And you know what the card said? Soulmate. Okay, first of all, as soon as the card says soulmate, I said, I know the devil is a liar, honey. Okay, I was like, this is no soulmate of mine because I was like, I knew immediately this was some sort of test or some sort of trick or something. And this is what I'm trying to tell you is that you have free will. Okay, so yes, this person is a soulmate and I'm gonna tell you why I figured out that they are. Okay, but they're a karmic soulmate. So then it's going to be up to me to make a decision as to whether I want to deal with this soulmate or if I want to pass by and not learn this karmic lesson. Now, because I had already dated somebody in the past that was constantly begging, you get what I'm saying? I was already disinterested in this. I wasn't interested in learning the same karmic lesson again, like not interested in that. Begging, you just want to lay up in Netflix and chill. You have nothing to bring to the table, nothing to offer, not committal. It's like it was not adding up, right? So after I got that, I was like, you know what? I don't care what the cards say at the end of the day, if he's a soulmate or not. I know it's toxic and therefore I'm refraining from this connection, which I did. And so how I know it's a soulmate, like they said, is because this person now, mind you, has been over two years, okay? This person still follows me on TikTok and Facebook. And so they message me every few months, okay, to try to see if I've lowered my boundaries, if I've changed my mind. They didn't message me because they changed, okay? They didn't message me because they all so in love with me and they all so enamored and they the best soulmate ever. No. They message me to get access to what benefits they think I offer. And the benefits that this person wants, obviously, is a Netflix and chill casual connection where they dry bag and get stuff out of me. And then I sit there and smile and have no wants, needs, or desires out of the situation. And so, therefore, this is a test to see, do I want to put myself in a position because I'm so desperate for a soulmate that I'm going to go ahead and pick up every soulmate that's on, on the list? Or do I have some sort of standards, boundaries, pride in myself, right? Do I protect my heart and decide, you know what? This is not the type of soulmate that I want to deal with, okay? Because it's toxic at the end of the day. And so, therefore, I'm going to wait until I find a soulmate that is balanced, okay? That has things to bring to the connection as well, right? Besides some D. It's like there has to be somebody bringing something else in. So, this is where... You learn that not every time is somebody a soulmate mean that they're a partner. It doesn't mean they're a life partner. It doesn't mean they're a forever mate, okay? It just means that you're meant to go through some sort of lesson with this person or grow from avoiding that karmic lesson with this person and giving yourself a pat on the back. This is what I did. I was like, you know what? <laughs> I'm so thankful I dodged a bullet, okay? Because over the years, he's shown himself and proven himself to still be useless, okay? And he even hit me up maybe about a couple of weeks ago Told my he really missed me and he really wanted to see me. And I told him straight up, you don't miss me, okay? You're lonely and you're bored and you want access to somebody's energy. And laying up under somebody casually and being an energy vampire is not the answer. And he told me, you know what? You're incorrect. I really do miss me. I, I, I mean, I really do miss you. But if you say so, and I said nothing else left on red, period. All right, boo, you got the moral of the story.